My friend Karen started baking bagels during the pandemic and delivering them. So when it came time to open her first cafe, she asked me to help design the interior. My name is Karen Rechachter. I'm the founder of Netherlands Bagels. I'm born and raised in New York City, in Queens. And I have been living in the Netherlands for six years. My family immigrated to New York in the late 19th century from what, what was Galicia, Prussia, and Russia. With them, they brought hopes of a new life as well as their food. And I'm very proud to be continuing that tradition of Ashkenazi food here in the Netherlands. My, my great-grandfather was part of the Bakers and Confectioners Union in New York at the turn of the century, and his name was Samuel Aaron. Many of those same recipes were passed down to my grandmother, who, no matter what, she wanted everyone to never leave hungry. As a designer, it's my job to help translate the story of Netherlands bagels into a space that's clean, safe, and comfortable for all visitors and workers. So I headed to The Hague to get to work. If you have a tight budget like Karen did, a fresh coat of paint can really work wonders. The inside was yellow. So yellow, in fact, that a visitor once commented that it looked like it was a smoker's bar. It was not, by the way. The walls were just painted that color. We started by removing everything off of the walls. For the bar area, I suggested to Karen that we pick an accent color. She came up with a Tiffany blue inspired by a candy shop from her childhood. Now, it's worth noting that in different lighting, paint colors can look very different. So if you're picking different colors, be sure to test them in the lighting of the space you're working in. Then a small team of volunteers, including me, spent several days helping to paint. Usually labor is one of the most expensive parts of a renovation job. So if you can do it yourself or have handy friends who can help, you can really save some cash. That being said, if you don't know what you're doing, I always recommend hiring professionals to save you time and energy, especially if you're doing larger demolition projects. After the walls are freshly painted, it was time to focus on the art and decor. One big piece I made on the chalkboard wall was inspired by Karen's visit to Ukraine. In Lviv, the Jewish community was so large that signs for the store were often written in both Yiddish and Polish, and what we now know as bagels originated from communities like these. The Yiddish signs in Lviv remain still to this day, reminding us of this history and this community that once lived here. To honor this, as well as the Jewish diaspora, I created a bagel sign wall. Here, bagel was written in Yiddish, Polish, and in English. To the side of the word art, I drew a sketch version of the Tenement Museum in New York City. Oftentimes, immigrants in New York City stayed in tenements, which were apartment buildings with very cheap rent. A family of 10 might stay in an entire unit. The tenements were also historically known as the world's largest Jewish city, and in the early 1900s, their labor was responsible for running many of the garment factories in New York City. In a similar vein, I turned an old board we found into another piece of art. Here, I freehand drew the Statue of Liberty, the symbol our great-grandparents would have seen as they passed from Ellis Island into New York City. A lot of the wall art was also sent from Karen's family in New York. And we also reused the existing furniture that was left by the previous owner to save money and time. This ensured that Karen could open after only two weeks, but is also a lot better for the environment. I tried to write and place the ordering signs in a way that I hoped would create an optimal flow for orders, as well as handwriting large enough so that people further back could hopefully see and begin to choose their order. Karen also made the decision to make the bathrooms unisex instead of gendered. It speeds up waiting time for the bathroom, especially when you only have two toilets available anyway for customers. After fixing up the plants by the windowsill and all the outside signs, we were finally ready to open. I also reused one of the vintage wall crates into a bright new flower box. Although the time was short and the budget small, I'm very happy with the changes we managed to make in the space. I hope you enjoyed following along and remember to subscribe if you enjoy learning more about architecture and design.